1939, after the German invasion of Poland, Australia, along with its allies, declared war on the fascist nation. Australia, despite being located on the other side of the world, hurried to send men over to fight alongside her British ally. The Australian Imperial Force was once more established and sent to Egypt, where they would train and acclimatise to the hot African weather. The Australian forces joined up with fellow Commonwealth countries, such as India and New Zealand, and prepared to join the war in North Africa. The town of Tobruk was located in the eastern part of Italian Libya and was a very important location due to its deep sea port. The deep sea port of Tobruk was vital to any effective advance along the North African coast. Due to the harsh terrain, there was little to no infrastructure along the North African coastline. As a result, majority of the supplies had to be shipped in. Due to Tobruk's strategic location near the Libyan border with British Egypt, it was vital to both sides if they wanted to push the other out of North Africa. After the Allied invasion into Italian Libya, the Allies were able to capture Tobruk and continued to push west. It wasn't until the arrival of Erwin Rommel's Africa Corps that the Allies were pushed back out of Libya. The siege of Tobruk began on the 10th of April 1941 with Axis forces surrounding the city. Within Tobruk laid an Allied garrison led by General Leslie Moreshead, which consisted of mostly Australian troops with British artillery and a number of Indian troops in support. These troops were able to be sporadically supplied from the deep sea port in Tobruk. The Suez Canal allows Britain to communicate with its Asian colonies and allows for quicker movement between Asia and Europe. Without the canal, all transport and communication would have to travel around South Africa, adding weeks or months to the journey, severely hindering the Allies' ability to wage war. Thus, it is pivotal that when Rommel attacked, Tobruk was held at all costs. The overarching objective of the Allies in North Africa was to ensure the security of the Suez Canal and remove all Axis forces in North Africa, allowing for complete dominance in the Mediterranean Sea. The German-Italian force was led by General Erwin Rommel, also known as the Desert Fox. This Africa Corps consisted of tank and infantry battalions. Unlike the Allies, the nearest deep sea port under their control was Tripoli, which was some distance away. As a result, supplies had to travel overland to arrive at the front line, which often led to delays and often caused mechanical malfunction in the transport vehicles. The Axis objective was to capture the Suez Canal, which would cut off the Allies' Asian forces and secure the Axis' southern flank. The Australian forces in Tobruk played a vital part in the defence of the city. Tobruk itself was very difficult to attack, having kilometres of flat land surrounding the town, which made spotting the attacker an easy undertaking. The siege began on the 12th of April 1941 with Axis forces attacking the city rapidly in three separate attacks. The Australian troops, which made up the vast majority of the garrison, manned most of the outer perimeter. The stern resistance of Australian troops came as an unpleasant surprise to the German forces on the ground. The soldiers fought against the odds to hold the perimeter of the town. Unlike in Europe, General Leslie Moorhead was able to successfully prevent the German blitzkrieg tactic by allowing the enemy tanks to pass through, then ambushing the following support infantry, cutting the tanks off from supply where they would then be hit with anti-tank and artillery fire, which would either destroy or force the units into retreat. The outwitted and comprehensively defeated German attack only inspired the men to continue fighting and to hold Tobruk at all costs. The stubborn resistance of the Allied forces was the target of German propagandist William Joyce, better known as Lord Haw Haw. He began describing the besieged men as living like rats in underground dugouts and caves. Much of the delight of the Axis, the Allied troops wore the title of the Rats of Tobruk as a badge of honour. The Australian general adopted an offensive strategy which involved harassing and attacking the enemy. 
he actively ordered patrols into no man's land to ensure Allied domination there, refusing to yield any territory to the Axis forces. This aggressive defence style proved effective in repelling enemy attacks and tying up additional Axis troops and resources in the area. The absolute tenacity of the Australian defenders was on full display when 22 men under Lieutenant Jenkins moved deep into no man's land to attack a group of Italian soldiers hiding in a valley. With the use of explosives and bayonets, these 22 Australian men managed to capture 74 Italian soldiers and an Italian officer. With a withdrawal request from the Australian government approved, the Australian soldiers who had fought for so long left Tobruk. Throughout the siege, Rommel's Africa Corps continued heading east. However, the advance was troubled due to logistical problems from stretched supply lines which could have been resolved if they had only taken Tobruk. The rats of Tobruk had been a menace in the eyes of the Axis as it threatened, amongst other things, its communication lines which prevented the further advance of Axis forces. The value of the successful defence of Tobruk was vital to the later Allied advance west. In 1942, the newly arrived garrison at Tobruk surrendered to Rommel's armies. In total, the siege lasted 14 months, with the Australian troops defending it valiantly until their withdrawal in the later months of 1941. The Axis capture of Tobruk had been extremely costly, making them expend large sums of resources such as tanks and lives in addition to hindering their efforts in invading Egypt. Rommel's Africa Corps had been weakened and this weakness laid the groundwork for the future Allied victory at Al Alamein and the defeat of the Axis forces across North Africa.